Welcome back to this module on File I.O. In this part, we'll cover binary files. The vast majority of files are actually binary files, which are just raw bits and bytes, raw data that's not intended for direct human consumption. Many of these formats have strict and specific formats and magic numbers to identify their types. Media files such as images, audio, video, etc., for example, are intended to be read and rendered by a program. For example, the GIF standard has very strict formatting. Here's the Wikipedia page giving an example of the formatting. The first collection of bytes are a magic number that render as GIF89A, or alternatively some other standard. That's how most programs can detect whether or not it's a valid GIF file. Following that, the bytes have very strict rules on what they can be. For example, the next few bytes indicate the width and the height in pixels. Then you have bytes that are encoding the color palette, and finally bytes that actually encode the pixels of the image. Binary files are often more efficient than plain text files because they take less space and thus can be read and written faster. In C, there are two functions, fread and fwrite, or freed and fright, that allow you to read and write binary data. Both are able to read and write multiple pieces of data in one function call. Here are the function signatures for both. As you can see, both take the exact same arguments. The only difference is that fwrite doesn't make changes to the data that's being written to the file. PTR is a pointer to the data that you want to read or write. For fread, the data read from the file will be placed into that memory address. While for fwrite, it's a pointer to data that's being written to the file. Size is the number of bytes that each element in the array takes. For that, we use the size of macro. N is the number of items being read or written, and F is the file pointer. Let's take a look at a quick demonstration. Here I'll only demonstrate the difference between plain text and binary output. Adapting this example to do binary file input is pretty straightforward. What I've done here is I've established the 10 largest primes that can be represented with a 32-bit integer. I open up a file in the data folder called numbers.txt for writing, and another one called numbers.bin in the same folder for also for writing. The difference is I'm going to write plain text to the numbers.txt file, and I'm going to write binary data to the .bin file. Writing to the plain text file is pretty straightforward. You use fprintf, the proper placeholder for an integer, and we print all 10 of them. Then we close the file. Using fwrite to output binary data is even simpler. We want to write the entire array of integers in binary. So we simply pass the array, which is a pointer. We use size of int to indicate the size of each element. There are 10 elements that we want to write. And finally, we write to the fbin file pointer. Then we close it. Let's go ahead and compile this. And let's run it. You'll note that there are two new files here, numbers.txt and numbers.bin. This indicates that the binary file is only 40 bytes total, which makes sense. Each integer takes four bytes. We wrote 10 of them, so that's 40 bytes total. However, the numbers.txt file is 110 bytes. Each entry took 11 bytes because each entry was 10 ASCII text characters followed by an endline character. So each line was 11 bytes. We can even determine what type of files these are. One is a binary format and the other is a text format. Now, if we were to open these up in a text editor, the plain text file is as we would expect it. This is a human readable format. However, the binary file is complete garbage as far as the text editor is concerned. Some of it is successfully rendered as letters, but for the most part, it's just binary. And there's a hex dump of the contents of that file. If you were to convert each one of these into a decimal format, 
you would recover the 10 prime numbers that we output to this binary file. Now the difference between 40 bytes and 110 bytes is not that big, but these are small files. Imagine that you were doing this on a much larger scale, storing millions or billions of figures. It would be a lot more efficient to store them in binary if they don't need to be human readable.